Hey everyone, um, I'm, I made it, almost made it to Canada. I'm over here in Niagara Falls and here's a little tribute to, uh, I don't know if you know this, who Nikola Tesla is, but I have to admit, uh, uh, a person who, uh, without his uh, inventions, we wouldn't have uh, most, of, uh, most of the technology we have today. So, there you go. Bye. Alright everyone, here I am uh, on the U.S. side here and uh, so this is the American Falls and of course if, uh, behind me, the other side, there's another falls over there um, but we're not going to pay attention to that because we're going to pay attention to this because it's called American Falls and there's a bridge that leads to Canada so um, and then there's uh, Canada right there and people on boats on the bottoms, but it's, uh, it's, it's amazing, it's beautiful. Um, so there's the gateway. Um, and so, I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm so close. And uh, if, I make it, if I make it over, uh, wish me luck. And also, wish me luck for me to come back. Uh, because uh, sometimes w if you cross a border, you may not be able to come back. So, anyways, there's there's Canada right there. Uh, I'm real, buddy. I'm real. I'm there. I'm there. So, uh, another thing is uh, there's a little ledge out here, and you can kind of see how far it goes down. Like, like check this out. This is crazy. But uh, I'm gonna hold on to my hat. And I'm gonna hold on to this phone really good. And um, it's freaking me out. Oh my god. That was that was uh, that's kind of scary for me right there, but there you go, everyone. Um, really beautiful out here. Uh, I guess uh, in the summertime, you know, everything thaws out, but you can see this great divide here. The Niagara Falls separates uh, U.S. from Canada, and uh, um, well, I'm I'm gonna bridge that gap, and uh, hopefully. Uh, this border it's, it's not really a, well this imaginary border that separates us will not be there anymore because it's just imaginary right it's it's not even real there's there's uh, obviously a physical in the physical world there's this river that separates us but other than that um, that's it all right Alright everyone, I made it. Yes, I fucking made it. Fuck all of you. What? I made it. And I'm gonna come back out as well. So, there you go, there you go, see the American Falls right there? And then there's the Horseshoe Falls over there. And so, uh, there you go. On the Canadian side, there is uh, New York. Hello, New York. Hello, New York. Here on the border. And here, Canada, right here. All right. I fucking made it. So uh, there you go. There you go. There's a backstory to uh, coming to Canada. I'll kind of explain it in the in the video to come. But, uh, you know, don't, don't let anyone stop you from doing what you want to do, uh, no matter who they are or, or what kind of authority they think they have over you. Um, like I said, if, you know, stand tall and straight and in your name, bear witness and the truth will set you free. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Bitcoin Trade. Sorry I've been, uh, I've been traveling. Uh, for me, summer is the time to travel. And uh, I travel uh, from where I usually am in Texas to north. Uh, summer for me is the time to travel uh, north. That's when the freeze 
uh, is uh, all thought out and uh, more more enjoyable weather than uh, being down down in the south. And so, anyways, in this episode, um, it's going to be a little news. I'm sure some of you already heard this news, but I have some comments on it. Um, also, um, a little a little opinion or a little uh, comparison analysis. Uh, Bitcoin uh, compared to, uh, I guess, what I would say, money. Um, you know, money before Bitcoin is pretty much what I'm going to compare. Bitcoin and then money before Bitcoin. Um, the term money, or or more uh, more specifically, um, fiat currencies or paper, uh, government-backed, central through a central bank. Um, currency and so uh, I'm going to do some comparison so basically um, so let's start off with with some news here okay and uh, let's let's go here and I want to specifically talk about uh, this right here um, as you've seen from my previous episode or, or the or the uh, I'm, I'm making this video from from Canada, specifically uh, around the Toronto area. So um, I guess some some backstory as well. Uh, as you've seen the previous videos here, I've uh, made it uh, into Canada, and uh, you know one of the challenges um, of taking Bitcoin over the border is first of all. Um, you know, sending Bitcoin is not a problem, but you yourself going over into another country um, so you can trade Bitcoins is an, quite a different challenge. Um, and so uh, the first struggle was to make it into another country, which, uh, you know, Canada is not really that much of a different country, but. Uh, but I made it. And the backstory is that uh, I attempted to go into Canada before and I was turned away and oddly enough um, I was turned away because uh, mainly because I'm a gun owner if you've seen my other videos where you see me uh, you, know, you know do a review on, on uh, two different guns uh, you know I'm a gun owner and not only am I a gun owner but I, I take uh, my guns with me everywhere and yes I said guns as in more than one uh, in reality, um, an infinite amount you can take with you. Uh, if you carry, if you have a license to carry and conceal, you can infinitely carry and conceal an infinite amount of guns, um, in theory. And so, uh, maybe in the future we can develop technology where um, you have the ability to carry uh, an infinite amount through some um, some some technology, space time bending technology um, black holes whatever whatever you know I mean it's in the future of course um, but uh, uh, in any case there are no limits to the amount of guns you can own there are no limits on the amount of guns you can have with you all right or even the type really um, um, some in some 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 cases, but for the most part, if it's a handgun, you can you can have an unlimited amount of guns with an unlimited amount of ammo. All right, there's no limit in America, and so um, the backstory is, uh, well, you know, uh, I, I I didn't always have a gun. Uh, I lived I lived most of my life without it, and uh, I have to tell you, just like. Uh, Bitcoin um, that's changed my life so is owning a gun or, or being a gun owner has changed my life and so um, I, I kind of felt that uh, because I was a, a gun owner I, I'm profiled now and every time I go to the border you know you got uh, these border patrol people um, 
Canadian Border Patrol people, whoever, whatever they are, you know, coming me, coming at me with an attitude, you know, like, um, you know, and I, and I, and I made it clear this time, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm coming through. All right, I'm coming through, and that's it. All right, no if answer, but I don't care how many guns I own. I'm coming through. Now, I didn't bring my gun this time, so last time I did make a mistake bringing my gun, but uh, uh, you know I wasn't arrested. My gun was not seized. Uh, I just was denied entry into the country, and uh, it kind of pissed me off. So I had to wait a whole year because I'm not coming here when it's you know freezing cold. I'm not going to freeze my balls off. And so, um, you know, I come here during, uh, when, when the freeze has thawed out. And so, that's kind of the backstory. That's kind of why I was, uh, very excited, as you can tell, crossing the border. Now, the question is, are they going to let me back out? And so, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not here too long. I have, a, a you know, a very specific goal to, to, uh, a specific thing to do, accomplish her, and I'm going to just do that. I'm going to soak in the culture, uh, the environment, and and see what uh, this country is really about, because it's it's a neighboring country of my country, and uh, you know, from from what I can tell, you know, you don't want uh, these neighboring countries uh, to be leeching their um, crazy ideas uh, into your country, all right? And you, could, you can kind of tell and uh, that this has been going on. Uh, you know, gun control um, is a restriction on my absolute rights. And, uh, you know, anyone who wants to abridge my rights is, uh, well, definitely not a part of this country and uh, is a threat to your um, every every right that you have um, you know they it's kind of weird they ask me why I own a gun and I just tell them because I have a right to and uh, just how very similar to how Bitcoin has changed my life owning a gun has changed my life because um, if you don't exercise your rights or use your rights, uh, you're gonna lose them. All right, you're gonna lose them, and you'll lose one day. You'll lose them forever, and you'll never get it back. Especially for those who already forfeited their rights. So if you forfeit your right, guess what? You have none, and you'll never get them back. And so, uh, you know, that's the kind of mindset that I have. And just like for me to use Bitcoin of my own absolute free will and choice, it is, uh, I believe, my absolute right to do so, to choose what I choose to believe. And so that's really important. And so there's a, a strong correlation between, um, especially in America anyway, uh, gun ownership and, and your absolute rights. There's a very strong correlation. And it's not just, uh, you know, uh, about shooting people. It's about protecting, all right, the, the right to bear arms protects all my other rights. Because at the end of the day, you know, um, they can slowly, on paper, legally, you know, chip away at your absolute rights on paper, right? So they'll come at you with the paper saying, well, the paper says you have no rights, right? They'll come at you with the paper, just like they come at you with paper money, all right? And uh, in this episode, I'll go into the comparison of, and this is going to lead into my other thing of comparison of um, Bitcoin and money before Bitcoin. Anyways, um, gosh, hold on here.
sorry for that. Um, the thing about uh, uh, getting into um, Bitcoin trading is that um, you have to realize that trading never stops. It's not like uh, like a Wall Street trader who uh, goes home at the end of the day and uh, you know does whatever. Um, being a miner and being an investor and being a trader is a commitment of a lifetime, and it's not for everyone. And uh, and I know some recent events in recent years, uh, Wall Street is very getting you know getting very excited about Bitcoin trading and using blockchain technology and everything. I don't think they understand that uh, what it really means to own a Bitcoin, because uh, you never rest. Okay, you never stop trading. You never. Um, it's 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 uh, it's a it's a commitment of a lifetime. And so it's not like something you can just say, oh well, uh, well, I quit, I stop, or um, I don't want to do this anymore. It's either you do it or you don't. Um, you can go back in and out and in and out, but eventually you'll you'll uh, you'll stop. You know, because you realize this is not for you, um, and you have to realize that uh, uh, when you when when you um, allow Bitcoin into your life, it's it's not it's not like you let uh, you're you're involved in Bitcoin. It's not like that. Like I'm involved in Bitcoin. It's not like that. It's more like uh, Bitcoin is involved with you. Okay, um, it's 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 for me anyway. It's it's it is a commitment of a lifetime in my point of view. I, I maybe some other people ha have worked out a different scenario for themselves in, in in trading Bitcoin or investing in Bitcoin or being involved in Bitcoin. But uh, it it really is a commitment of a lifetime. And uh, for people who really want to get involved in this, um, they should really think twice, three times, four times, because uh, you shouldn't take this too lightly. Uh, because when when you get wrapped up in it, and your life is changed by it, uh, there may be no way of going back, really. And so, anyways. Um, first thing I want to talk about was this. I'm sure by now most of you have uh, heard about this. And uh, right here, Bitcoin execs, uh, CoinMix execs arrested for operating illegal Bitcoin exchange. Um, it is kind of news, and the reason why I talk about it because um, you know I, I know this sounds so weird, and I'm not, but uh, you know I've had experience with. Coin mix. I don't. Uh, I've never traded with Coin mix or anything, but uh, I had some entity uh, saying they're from Coin mix or trying to push me to uh, trade. You know, with Coin mix. You know, I get a lot of I get a lot of strange entities coming out of Florida, and I'm not sure if it's uh, law enforcement, Secret Service, FBI, or 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 scammers, or maybe. Maybe just regular people who want to trade. Although the, the regular people who want to trade actually trade with me. All these other people, I don't know what the fuck they're doing, you know. Um, but obviously, if, if they can't trade on my terms, uh, then you know we don't we don't trade at all. Uh, anyways, um, had someone claiming to be from CoinMix wanting me to do, um, trying to convince me to do some large trades, want me to. Want me to do something with them, and uh, you know we couldn't come to terms on on how to trade, and so I never heard from them again. And apparently, um, you know, for people out there who are getting the trading, if they can, if 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 your counterparty, the person you're trading with, can't come to terms with you, or you can't come to terms with them, it's probably a best not to even trade at all, because at that point. It's pretty obvious that uh, you know neither party is going to be satisfied with the trade, 
uh, if none of them can come to terms. And so that's kind of why I bring it up. So uh, I did read um, whatever the indictment or whatever it is and the investigator. I have to say this is a little different than the previous arrest that was made in, in Florida regarding Bitcoin. It seems like they were just trying to entrap people. Um, it didn't matter what what the case was. They were just looking for people to arrest, like anybody. Anybody, anybody they traded with, they, they arrested them. In this case, it seems a little different. It seems to be that they actually did like their job, which was to investigate and actually, um, you know, uh, find, you know, bad actors, criminals, actually trying to launder money. It seems that way anyway. So I read it, and uh, you know, it. it uh, I could tell that the writer was trying to write to get, you know everything signed off to get an arrest um, you know they, they're quoting some of the older uh, FinCEN guidelines uh, regarding Bitcoin and um, you know th th that kind of bar bothered me a little bit that they're quoting and, and they're putting out an older version of the guidelines um, to make their case and uh, kind of al almost pushing the limits of, of what they were trying to say like um, you know, the, someone buys Bitcoin for you for to unlock the malware. Uh, are you a criminal for doing that because you sold someone? And and what if they told you, yeah, I'm I'm in a situation where, and I've, I've had people come to me with that, you know, a lot of times. And um, you know, uh, I don't give a shit about your situation. All right, if you want to buy bitcoins, buy bitcoins. If you want to sell bitcoins, sell bitcoins. Whatever the fuck you do afterwards, I don't give a shit. Okay, um, because I don't control what you do, and if you think that you need to buy bitcoins to unlock uh, this stuff, and you're you're basically paying the ransom, then then really you're the one. All right, the person who pays the ransom, all right, is the one that's uh, assisting in the um, in the profit of criminal enterprise, whatever bullshit. You know, they, they seem it seemed pretty weak a lame, uh, you know, it just seems like they just threw it in there and it was kind of really lame. Um, that's just my opinion from reading it. But I have to admit, they did some investigating, I guess, um, and it seemed like they're really going after uh, people who were um, really, you know, trying to, uh, you know, commit a crime or in an act of a crime instead of just going after anyone who has a Bitcoin or anybody who's using a Bitcoin or buying a Bitcoin or selling a Bitcoin. So, um, you know, so I'll, I'll give them that much. But at the same time, you know, I, I do feel that they're still out there trying to tempt us. You know, only the wicked tempt others. And... Uh, you know, that doesn't settle well with me that uh, someone who is sworn to uphold and protect, um, you know, us all, the people, is going to go out there and, and tempt us all. Because only the wicked tempt. Um, will, will, will tempt us, I guess, should I say. I guess whatever how I said it before it sounded much better and so um, uh, that's still disturbing to me and uh, as long as there is injustice being done um, I'm not going to stand by and just let this happen so I hope they fine-tune their operation better um, because uh, you know there's, there's a, there really is a fine line between upholding the law and then, you know, protecting and serving and instigating a crime to imprison, you know, the people you're supposed to protect and serve. You know, uh, it all starts with good intentions, but we all know where good intentions can lead. So. So that's an update on that. Uh, 
for people in Florida, I suggest you, you read, I guess, I don't know what's it called, indictment or whatever it is. Um, and, and people who are trading, you know, should read this and try to understand, you know, how they're trying to approach, um, you know, the persecution of Bitcoin or criminalization of Bitcoin. Um, because there, there really is a fine line. And, and, you know, the law enforcement are walking that fine line just as I am walking that fine line. And I'm pushing as just as much as they're pushing. Uh, they know, as well as I know, that if we need to push something, it needs to be pushed right now. Because the longer they wait, because I'm pushing right away, right, I'm, I'm pushing right now. I'm pushing as far as I can go, and I will keep pushing. And I'll push it all the way. And I think uh, they know that too, and they're pushing just as much to uh, maintain their operations and whatever they're doing. So that's that. I want to kind of update on, on that news. And then let's go to a chart here real quick. Okay. So I'm going to a chart here now, and uh, a lot has happened. Uh, it's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone up again. Um, not quite at the 300 or above the 300 level. Um, but before I get into the chart analysis, I want to talk about um, the comparison between Bitcoin and then money, uh, especially money before Bitcoin and even right now. And when I say money, um, I'm talking about in general, like credit cards, checks, um, cashier's checks, um, what else? Um, all these other things that the, and I'm going to say the dark overlord has created uh, for us to use to enslave us. And um, I'm, I'm going to do a comparison and I want you all to come up with your own conclusions on this, although you know I'm kind of very biased. But, but let's just start out with the comparison and, you know, I, I kind of want people understand, you know, why do I trade Bitcoin? Why do I bother? You know, isn't it easier just to get a job somewhere? And to some degree, yeah. And, and but from my personal opinion, no. Um, for, so let me start, like, Bitcoin, all right, is the only original, it's the original and only true open source all right and so if you look at money all right that is the false source all right it is the false source okay uh, Bitcoin uh, is the true source all right that's the open true source, right, technology, as money is a false source, okay, it is misleading, it is deceptive, all right, and so that's the first comparison. The other comparison is if you look at Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin frees you from slavery, it liberates you from slavery, okay, um, money and traps you into slavery. It keeps you in slavery. It keeps you bound and chained to your master, the dark overlord, right? Whereas Bitcoin, that was created from the Creator, all right, because the Creator has delivered us all the technology to break free, all right. And uh, it's it's so interesting. Um, that you know if you if you look at what money does and and, and this is kind of why I, I I look at I look at this and um, you know how they're trying to criminalize uh, Bitcoin you know they're trying to they're saying it's not legal you know it's everything's okay there are legitimate uses but but look at this right and then also um, you know the other story of the the sheriff who who uh, has made a complaint to Visa and Mastercard regarding Backpage, right? 
I find that very on ironic because um, in my my view is that, uh, and I'm sure you've all heard of this, the root of all evil is money, right? And uh, you know, it, if you think about it, why why do people do some of these things for money, right? Why do people commit crimes for money? Why do people sell their bodies? You know, why, why do people sell their bodies for money? Why do people sell uh, sex for money? Um, and you notice it's for money, all right? Because Bitcoin is a new creation, all right? Before Bitcoin, there was just money. And uh, if you look at the root cause of, um, you know, if you look at the root cause of all of this, you'll see that it's every everything behind it is money, and it's because money enslaves you. All right, um, it's bad enough people are trading their lives for nothing all right so you're offered nothing in exchange for your life and on top of that in that during that exchange whatever you were given first of all it's nothing okay but even then it 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 goes down it goes to a negative because whatever that nothing was that supposedly has value loses its value over time so you're given nothing and then a negative so therefore you've been enslaved and uh, you know as you're trying to make a life for yourself or you're trying to take back your life uh, you're burdened with a drowning debt and on top of that drowning debt you're also burdened with the devaluing of any money you get and so really uh, from the get-go from the start you're automatically enslaved all right you've been tricked all right you've all volunteered but you volunteered because you were promised something but you were really promised nothing all right and then um, you know, you're probably asking yourself, well, why do why do some people do really well and others do, other people don't? You know, and uh, in my opinion, because oh, this is just my opinion, and I mean, you can do the comparison yourself, or you know, I'm sure you all can think for yourself now. Um, when you come into this physical world, all right, I, I I really believe that that you're at a disadvantage automatically the day you're born because you will all be marked okay you're all marked automatically from the day you're born because the uh, and I'll just say it the dark overlord the evil emperor has dominion over this physical world right he controls or she controls I don't know the dark overlord controls this world all right he's he's created the false source okay and uh, you know that false source is is money all right and when you come into this world you're marked automatically and uh, the way you're rewarded in this world right is if you worship the dark overlord you worship the false source okay and if you worship it if you follow it if you love it right and I know some of you love it a lot I mean you, you know um, uh, you receive your cut right you receive your cut of the of, of the money for for worshiping the false source and so um, you know that's why they're able to do well right they worship the false source 
so they receive their cut. And so others don't want to do that, right? And they're punished. Okay, they're punished. They don't get banking access. They get their bank accounts closed. They can't uh, transfer money anymore. Um, your credit goes to shit. Um, you're denied uh, financial services, right? Visa, MasterCard, denying services to Backpage. And so um, that's, that's the dark overlord's world that we live in. Okay, and so here comes Bitcoin, right, which the Creator has delivered us all the technology to break out of slavery, to break free, to break your chains, your bonds to your master. And, uh, you know, it, it uh, wipes away the mark. And we no longer have to receive any cut of money because we can create our own, right? Okay, and so the last comparison I want to do between Bitcoin and, and money, okay, Bitcoin is of your absolute free will and choice, all right? No one's going to force you to use Bitcoin. When you come into this world, you're not, you know, tagged and bagged and marked uh, to use Bitcoin. Uh, it's of your choice. You come to the source. You know, you come to the source, the true source, all right, of your own free will. Money, right, is forced upon you um, you know uh, and, and I'm gonna pervert this kind of kind of thing it's it's almost like um, like some kind of child molester or some rapist you come into this world and already you're getting molested right you're being forced upon all right this money's being forced upon you and you don't have a choice and then you're told that this is okay, this is normal, this is how it is. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what a rapist does, and that's what a child molester does. And uh, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, a, I'm really biased about this, but I want you all to come to your own conclusion, in spite of my um, biased opinions on, on all this. But, uh, you know, if it gives you some thought on, onto this, uh, I just want you to just think about it. At least just think about it. I mean, think it, just compare it, right? And so, uh, those are the difference in in uh, in Bitcoin and, and money. Okay. When I go to another country, I can still use Bitcoin um, of my own choice, right? Uh, before Bitcoin, um, if you went to another country you were forced it was forced upon you to use their money the false sources money the dark overlords money right and so um, you know why why do why do people commit crimes why do why does this happen why is there poverty why is there uh, so much suffering, you know, uh, people just want to live a decent life. Um, well, the answer is right in front of you. And so, I want to do that comparison. You all come to your own conclusion, and uh, hopefully that helps you understand how, why, why I trade Bitcoin? Why do I trade Bitcoin? Why do I put so much effort in spreading the use of Bitcoin? And, uh, and uh, why do I put so much effort into coming into Canada, going to other countries, and, and trying to meet as many people as I can to, um, you know, uh, spread the use of Bitcoin? 
So now you know how I feel about it anyway. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a commitment of a lifetime. It's not something you can turn your back on. Anyways, let's go back to a chart analysis. Okay, and this is on an hourly. And you can see here on an hourly that it, it, did, it didn't go that's as far as it went down when it did go down. Uh, as far as this chart anyway. But it did stop around here and leveled off for a very while, like a couple days over the weekends. And then it started shooting up. And as you can see the momentum and it started coming back down and then it shot up again. And, it's, and each time it's making a higher high. But it hasn't quite reached the high of last, which over or in a 12 hour period, which is uh, this high right there, which would be uh, the 316 on uh, Bitfin. And then another thing I notice is if you look at Hobu, uh, it's, it's still down, but it was higher. But it, but you can see Bitsy there is now starting to catch up a little bit. So um, you're starting to start. You're probably going to start seeing some more movement, or uh, or it's already happened, one or the other. Um, but you can see that it's it took a little rest here, it came down, and then it's looked like it's working its way back up again. We'll see how far it goes. It it you'll know that if this is this is going to go higher if it breaks above this. And uh, even though it pulls back for a moment, it, mo chances are it'll continue to go up higher, uh, just because it the second time around it went up. And uh, a good indication would be it would be a very solid line, you know, like like here you see here, a very solid line, solid candlesticks, and that momentum is just going to push through. And a lot of things are going to be correlating. And I don't know if you all noticed that that. Um, you know, it seems like, as far as the financial markets, it just seems to, um, as those markets start to collapse, the fall is occurring, um, you start seeing Bitcoin rising. You know, you could say it's rising from the dead <laughs> for the fourth time, fifth time, I don't know. Like how, how, how many times does Bitcoin have to rise from the dead? Right to to finally convince everyone that this is um, this is real. How many times? You know, uh, I don't know. I guess I guess for some people, uh, you know, they'll they'll never accept Bitcoin because they're receiving their cut of money. Right, those, those people that are marked. And they're receiving their cut from the false source. Those people will never accept Bitcoin, ever. And uh, those are the people that are gonna attack you, attack Bitcoin users. And they're everywhere. They're entrenched in every level of of office. Um, you know, they're they're just everywhere. And uh, they will never. They would never convert to Bitcoin. Never. Uh, I'm. I'm just. I'm just telling you that right now. They're too deep in in the worship of the false source, and uh, for them to turn now would mean death for them. Okay. It would. It would be a miracle for one of them, which you know what, it could happen. Uh, it would be a miracle, uh, but. Uh, but it's basically a death sentence for them to do that. And that's why I don't think none of them will. But that's all right, because, um, you know, for those who, uh, you know, bear the mark and uh, are receiving their cut, um, they'll be rewarded justly. You know, their reward, um, they will inherit a dying world in which you know they'll probably live pretty good in that dying world but eventually as um, that world dies and starts to fall and collapse on itself uh, they'll be the last to feel it that's the only thing but that's what their reward is the 
inheritance of a dying world and they'll only feel it at the end because that's when it'll be their turn to perish that's the only time they'll they'll realize it when it's too late and until then they'll live a great life you know they'll they'll live it up all right because that's the that's the uh, the promise right that's that's the promise the deal right that's what they signed over to that's what they gave up their life for that's what they forfeited um, they forfeited everything for their, for a dying world and so uh, you know, that's well. Anyways, that's what I have to say for that. So, back to the chart analysis. Now, if you look at it, it uh, it's going up, and it's starting to look like build up another wave. And you know, when when it starts building up another wave, it's just like the first time. It's like really slow. Uh, you may see a large spike in, um, or even on the uh, MACD or on the RSI, there'll be a large kind of like a spike and then as you see little spikes as it goes up higher in the 70s I don't know well, let me let me see if I have the RSI here um, right here and there we go okay Let's see if it, okay all right RSI um, you know you'll, you'll you'll see on the RSI like you'll it'll be high but as you notice that these other RSI levels aren't as high as this because, but yet it's going higher in price, right, especially this right here, which uh, is almost equal to that. And then you'll start seeing it again, where you'll, you know, and these are, you know, they, they don't look like they're going to move higher in price, but, but when you're in the level of above 50 into the 70s, it doesn't really take that much to push the price higher, uh, although this is not higher down here on these RSI levels. So you'll start seeing the first wave, and then the waves will just continually get bigger because, um, you know, it's kind of weird. Is it coincidence? Quinky dink? I don't know. It's kind of weird. But uh, the things that are going on in this physical world, uh, the collapsing of financial systems, will correlate with the resurrection of of Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, you'll just start, you know, it's almost like you'll start seeing the writing on the wall. It almost becomes almost too predictable in some ways. And, uh, you know, it, it's just weird how it just correlates to that. Um, the new world and how it correlates with the old world. And you can see people are abandoning the the ship, you know, the Cordaquista. I don't know, whatever that Italian ship that ran aground. Um, that's pretty much what's happening to this world, is being run into the ground, right? And the captain accidentally just falls into one of the uh, life-saving boats, the rescue boats, you know. So, anyways, that's my analysis here. And uh, this is a Canadian episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, it's going to be fun. Um, I'll keep you all up to date. Uh, anyways, uh, feel free to like, dislike, uh, leave a comment, even a video response. Until next time, stay tuned.